All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the bool object. Now, it can be used very much like Pathfinder or Shape Builder if you're familiar with Illustrator, um, but in 3D. Now, uh, there are definitely other ways to approach this type of technique when it comes to using one shape or multiple shapes to cut out uh, or, or combine with uh, another shape. And um, the Volume Builder slash Volume Mesher uh, is another alternative to this. Now, there are definitely some advantages to the bool. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so back in cinema here, uh, just to start, what we can do is create a cube uh, followed by something like a sphere. Now the bool wants to work with two objects. Now there's a little bit of a asterisk there because there is kind of a workaround to that, but let's just say we have two objects um, and I want to say cut out um, this sphere uh, sphere from the cube. So what you need to do is come down here uh, to uh, your generators, find bool, and put both of these objects inside the bool. Now the way this works is the first object is A, the second object is B, and if you select the bool in the object properties here, you will see that we have different boolean types. Um, right now we're sub subtracting A from B, so we're subtracting the sphere from the cube. Um, if we switch this um, to say a union B, you'll now see we have this combined. Now, a big part of what makes the bool uh, something to avoid is what it does with our edges um, and how many, you know, n-gons, triangles we get from it. So that'll be something to keep an eye on and a good reason to turn on lines when we're working with this. Now, a big part of that as well is high quality. You can see when I uncheck high quality, uh, we get all sorts of issues um, in terms of triangles and gons, all that type of stuff. So you can see union here. We already saw subtract. Um, we can do intersect. So that's where these two objects intersect. And lastly, A without B. So it kind of gets rid of it. Now you may be going, well, wait a second. None of those are really kind of what I was expecting, and that's because the order here does matter. So the sphere is A, the cube is B. Like I said, if we switch these, now we're starting to get something kind of interesting uh, and something useful. Now, another really important thing about the bool, and one of the reasons why you may want to use it as opposed to something like the volume builder slash volume mesher, is that it's a little bit quicker. Um, things you know, update faster. It's not quite as heavy as the volume builder slash volume measure. Um, and that can also be helpful when it comes to animating. So you can definitely animate, you know, these shapes kind of moving through and, and doing whatever you need them to do. Now, when it comes to animating the bool, I highly recommend turning off high quality. Uh, now that may seem counterintuitive, but if you ever get any flickering, um, when it comes to a bool and animating it, turning off high quality typically fixes that, okay? Because it seems to be drawing more edges, things seem to work a bit better, okay? Now, create a single object will turn this into a single object. So if you were to make this editable, um, you can see we end up with multiple pieces here. However, with single create single object turned on, you get a single object. So that can be helpful. Okay, hide new edges. Um, honestly, I'm not entirely certain what that does. I really haven't had a need for it. Um, if you want to create some fong breaks uh, to help you with fong shading, that this can be helpful. Uh, you can also use this to select intersections. And lastly, optimizing points will go through and weld points that are very close together or within whatever threshold um, you put there. And that can be very helpful, especially if you have to um, turn off high quality, or if you have very dense polygon objects here. Now, another thing I mentioned about the bool is what do you do if you want to cut out multiple objects here? You know, one sphere is great. What if I wanted to cut out more than one? Well, the bool only works with A and B or two objects. However, one of those objects, perhaps even both of them, can be nulls. So I can group this object. Okay. I could duplicate the sphere and then move it to say a different side here. So now 
we have both of these spheres being cut out. Okay, so there we go. We're able to use multiple objects. And we could keep repeating this. I could add a third sphere, do the same thing. You know, this would be a great way to create um, a, a dice or a die, right? By using this null object to group however many spheres or whatever objects you want to cut out. Now, like I said, the bool is a little bit of a cheat. You know, ultimately, when you are modeling something, you want to model it uh, more correctly and not leave it up to Cinema 4D to create the edges, the edge flow, whether you have n-gons or triangles uh, for your piece of geometry. Now, it does depend what the end use of this piece of geometry is. If it's not going to be animated or if it's not going to deform, change shape at all, then it really probably doesn't matter if you use a bool. However, if this is going to be used with, say, a bend deformer or something else, you definitely want to take the edge flow in the, the polygons, whether they're triangles, quads, n-gons, into consideration. So let's see perhaps another tool or technique for um, making something like this work better. Now, as this is S26, um, we should be able to use, um, is it under, let's see, where is it? The remesh here. Okay, I can drop this in the remesh and use the Z remesher. Uh, and you'll see that is definitely helping in terms of getting rid of triangles, adding four-sided polygons here, and really making this look pretty good. And, you know, we could probably even increase the density beyond 100 if we wanted a little bit more detail. And something like this would actually work pretty well inside a subdivision surface, which cannot be true, uh, is not true if you throw just a bool in there like we're kind of seeing here. So that can be really, really helpful. Um, another thing to consider though is that the bool tends to be something um, that is used for very quick modeling or for beginners who may not know any other ways or approaches to modeling something like this. So I thought that might be um, something fun to uh, do here. And I'm just gonna simplify this though. You could absolutely do this with multiple multiple spheres here. Okay, so let's say I did want to cut out a spherical shape or a cylindrical shape from a cube like this. Well, I actually don't need to do this with a bool. Okay, um, I can do it just with a sphere. Now I'll keep this cube really just as reference. Okay, and what I'll do is make this sphere editable. And what I'm going to do is slice this sphere exactly where I kind of want it cut off, right? Uh, now, I could use the bool to help me with this, but we'll pretend like it's not there. Uh, so what I'll do is go to plane cut and make sure I get the right option here. So cut all is perfect. I do want to switch the mode here to world. And there we go. Now you can see I can cut through this object um, anywhere along the X and Y axis. I'm going to go into actually it was my right view here. And what I can do is if I turn on, I think Snap will work for this. No, a little bit too far off. So I'll just kind of get really close. Choose there. And that should have sliced for me. If for whatever reason it didn't, which maybe it didn't, I'll check one more time. Slice. And let's see, did that work? Doesn't look like it did for, oh, no, it did. Perfect. So we have that slice there. Now, what I want to do is keep this side and get rid of the polygons over here. So back to a right view and turn the cube back on just for reference. I'm gonna make sure I go into polygon selection, rectangle selection and select all these, getting as close as possible and delete them. Now, uh, it didn't select the ones right up there because tolerance selection was not turned on. Now with tolerance selection, uh, it will select polygons that aren't entirely inside. All right, so that's why we get those additional ones. Go ahead and delete those. Now we have our cube. And so what I can do now is, uh, I'm sorry, sphere, starting with this sphere, the more complicated shape, make the easier shape, which is the cube. Now we could also cheat this uh, by merging these two shapes together, okay? So taking the sphere, making it merge with this cube, though you could just as easily create a whole cube from this. So what I'll do is 
Um, actually, I don't know if I want to connect and delete quite yet. I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to go into loop selection and select the outer edge, or at least try to. And if for whatever reason, it won't let me. Oh, perfect. We got it. And I'm going to extrude these. Not by going to right click extrude, but by switching to my scale tool, holding controller command and dragging out. And it doesn't have to be this far out, but that's looking pretty good. And what I can do now is just kind of straighten these out. You know, really what I'm trying to do is take my more complicated shape, which is a sphere and make the cube. And so I just need to straighten these out to form this side of the cube. And that's pretty easy to do. I can just select maybe, let's see, all of those points, open up my attribute manager here. Actually, that's not attribute, that is my coordinate manager, my apologies. And choose the Y axis, hit zero, and that will flatten them out. And just kind of work my way around doing this. So do that. This will be the X axis that I want to zero out or straighten out. X axis here. And you could just as easily straighten these out by scaling them a whole bunch, right? Just scaling them and scaling them and scaling them. Um, or you can just zero it out right down here. Perfect. Lastly, all I need to do is kind of fit um, these points to the existing cube. And uh, before that, though, we're going to have to weld some points here, get rid of some of these points. Um, now we could add additional edge loops to our cube to help. That could be helpful depending on what we plan on doing. Like I mentioned, if we're going to use deformers or something, but just for something like this, we can just as easily, uh, weld and that will work. So I'll keep this middle one here because I can go ahead and fix that. And I'll keep some of these edge loops. So it's not completely triangles. Um, like I said, you know, depending on what we're trying to do, um, we may want to split these up and actually did a not great job uh, combining these. So I think these three should go to the middle here. Corner, actually. Corner, these three to the corner. So I'm just welding. Right. Oops. Okay. Now, what the way the weld tool works is uh, if you don't choose a specific point, it wants to average their positions, kind of figure out the middle, which can be helpful, but I want them to all go to a specific point. So I'm going to hover over that point and then I can click. All right. No, I was going kind of fast there, but it is very nice about the well tools. That is something you can do pretty quickly. So there we go. We have something looking pretty good. Okay. I can turn on my snap tool, which can help it. Uh, make, make it easier for me to line up the corner points here to the edge of my cube. And then for the, re the rest of them, I'll go to my cube and just use loop path cut to add a couple more edge loops, All right? So I'll just click anywhere, make sure I set this to 50%. So it's in the middle, it's in the middle, 50%. And, you know, it's not like my sphere was perfectly centered here. So it's not, you know, a huge deal. Um, but still makes things a little bit easier if things are centered. There we go. And there we go. Lastly, select both objects, right click, do a connect objects plus delete. They are now two, or I'm sorry, they've been combined to a single object, but they haven't been welded. So if I was to come in here, you know, select one polygon and move this, you'll see that it's still separate. Uh, to fix that now, what I can do, it doesn't really matter what kind of selection mode I'm in here. Um, I'm going to right click and choose optimize, which welds a whole bunch of points at once, as long as they're within this threshold. Now you can adjust that. Um, optimize will also do a few other things, get rid of unused points or polygons that you don't need. Um, I can hit OK. And if you watch my selected and total points here, we should see this change. All right. So it went down by four. Um, I feel like that isn't quite enough. So we can check and see that, yep, some of them 
didn't quite weld. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a normals issue. Let's see. Yep. So if you notice, two different colors here between the pieces. We do want them all to be the same color. Uh, the yellow color here means the polygons are facing outward. Blue means inward. All right. So I can just select all. And I can just try aligning normals. Let's see if that works. Oops. Um, I could have swore there was something a little bit. Nope. Okay. So there wasn't like a, I swear there was a kind of have Cinema 4D figure it out type thing. But all I need to do is select my polygons here, right click, and now I can choose the very bottom. Let's see if I can get that a little bit more on screen. Uh, reverse uh, normals here. I could have swore there was something else um, in here that would have helped with that, but uh, I guess I don't see it in, in S26. So good old reverse normals. Now everything's the same color. And now when I go to optimize again, we should see that um, point number uh, change quite a bit more. So there's optimize. Oops, let's go into points and try that, although it shouldn't matter. Yeah, there we go, 62. All right, you can always just check by selecting a point. And interesting, still not welded. So we can always come through here, manually select both points and weld them. And I maybe not certain why that didn't work, but nothing else gives us another opportunity to see weld. And there we go. So definitely should have worked. Not sure why it didn't. No big deal though. A little just more manual work. Perfect. And there we go. So we started with the more complex shape, uh, which was the sphere. We made a cube from it, or at least one side of it. Hopefully, if you understand this process, you could see how easy it would be to kind of continue this and make the rest of the cube. And while this isn't quite four-sided um, polygons, it would be very easy to do that. Uh, we've done a pretty good job of keeping the polygons um, quad, or at least very easy to make quads. Just maybe another edge loop or two going, going around. Um, and that will do it. Okay, so that's a look at the bool. It's a look at how to avoid using the bool. Also kind of took a quick, quick look at using the remesh to kind of help uh, avoid this process if necessary. Uh, and I think that will do it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I believe this was actually recommended uh, by somebody or somebody mentioned this in the comments. So if there is anything uh, you would like to see, uh, please just let me know and I'll see what I can do.